Hi guys and girls, JD here. Today I'm gonna do a my thoughts slash mini review on the this Galax PC case, the Rave one, it's the Revolution one, the black version. Um, Galax actually has quite a couple of cases currently out. I think the the Rave one has been out for a couple of years at this point, but mainly in the Asian Indian market. Um, and they currently have three versions of cases out. So it's this, the Rev 1, white and black, four included fans, ATX size, metallers, power supply shrouds, like the standard, well, decent airflow, mesh front panel, well, half mesh, half covered, more than half mesh actually, in reality. But yeah. Looks decent. Then have the Rev 2. Which I must say I haven't looked at significantly. But this is apparently E80X but lost less, lot less front airflow. Um, then they have the M80X slash ITX1, the Rev 3. And then they have the Rev 5, Rev 5 in white and black again. Which are mid towers, maybe full towers with lots of airflow again. So, yeah, and lots of um, component manufacturers, well, I suppose you can call them component manufacturers, specifically GPU manufacturers, AIBs, don't have the greatest track record when it comes to making cases. The MSI one, I think, that featured in, uh, I think MSI have had two cases feature in Gamers Nexus's that year-end horror show, horror PC build. And then Asus recently had the Helios, also solid glass front panel, bad airflow. And then, but when they took the front panel off, the glass front panel off, apparently significantly better performance, things like that. I didn't watch the whole review. I like some of their case reviews, but I'll watch, I watch more the specific ones I am interested in, as opposed to watching all of their case reviews. Um, currently my background in building is limited to the 215 for the most part the Lian Li Lan Gul 215 that's my current case I started off with some of the parts we'll see in the photos later in it the background and then going over to where I bought the case from it's one of my favorite local suppliers I love the his website so the there's the full the Galaxy Revolution 1 RGB tempered, tempered side panel on a swing mount. Yeah, you can actually see it on the white panel. So just the swing out door with a pull tab. 224, 460 by 215 at the back. And at the price that it's currently at, listed at 481, is it's under $50, which makes this a budget territory case. Although standard it's about a 70 dollar case i think well if you take the price of the white version which does cost slightly more than the black one normal but the black one has been on sale it was on sale last month for two weeks and it's been on sale now for two weeks as well i think on the start of october so at current exchange rates, just under fifty dollars, and then the white one is just over seventy dollars at filming. So we'll just go over. It has, as you can see, a slightly bulged front panel. It's also of the pull hard persuasion. Relatively fine mesh, slight covering, so you don't have full full mesh, but it's still plenty to get the for airflow. It's not a restricted airflow case. Um, yeah, you can see the three fans. Slightly better photo from the front. Also, relatively flat motherboard tray. It's actually almost perfectly flat. It has some indentations from the way it was stamped. Things like that. Better cutouts. Better, well, these don't have grommets these three standard flat cutouts here's another decent cutout at least 
there at the top is also a place for you to pass cables through. This one is very nice as well. Both of these and then this one you're at the back. You can't see that so nicely. I think I have a better photo for that. It's so it's not just a flat cutout. There's space towards the back panel. So because this stands out from the back panel of the case, you actually have decent. This might look like a small hole for cable routing then. But you have a lot bigger gap for cable routing than what you'd think then. This has actually looks like it has, well, it does have decent, not a lot, but it has a decent amount of space between the motherboard tray and the back panel. It comes with four included 120mm ARGB fans with a controller. It's actually listed on the spec sheets, but there's no photos of it. So I was worried about how it would look coming from the 215, which is... Also, $70, $80 case with an integrated controller. It's actually very nice. I have a photo of it. You can see magnetic top filter. It doesn't have the best eye in the world power button, lighting controller, and reset button. Then you have mic in, mic out, a USB 3 and a USB 2.0. So the USB port choices are l bad, I would say. There's no USB-C, even punch, or hole punched. They are, it is a, at $70, it's not a budget case. Well, taxes included. And yeah, there's just the one last photo just from this side. So you can see the back. You can see this has a, it works on a sliding mechanism. The same as what some of you guys know from some office cases or the older office case specifically. So this slides, I've I've seen it on one or two of the office cases. The slides up and down with a space which just presses onto the lip of the PCIe bracket. It doesn't actually hold it in place. You screw, there's a hole for the screws which you screw from the side to fasten the PCIe bracket and then this just tightens with that screw against it. So it doesn't hold the PCIe cards in the bracket, you still use a screw straight into the slot as normal. So you technically don't need this, but it's there. We'll come back to the PCIe slot covers later, because that's one of my biggest problems with this case. I think it's my biggest problem with the case, and there's another one. So, but yeah, it's a $50 case. What are you going to do? They are going to be corners cut. At, if you can get it for $50, that is. Even $70 may be a harder sell. But even then you have four ARGB fans. Controller. It's a decent case for its price, even at $70. Okay, and now we're going over to some of the photos I took. So it's just the box that it came in. Matawa. The Galax branding. Just first just take it out as you can see this mesh is really fine mesh actually has a good like hand feel as well i enjoy i think this looks really good in person it's f fine enough to stop most dust particles and things but it's not dust filter so you're going to have to clean more often than if it had a filter but it's also not completely open or big holes the holes are smaller than the holes on my Blankel 215's front panel. And this is just a swing door. Yeah, I've taken the door off. You can see it just those hinges and you lift up from the top. Um, as you can see, very flat motherboard tray, little accessory baggy. It actually had a GPU support bracket on, which I think is listed on the website, but not on the retail store page. Which, it screws in here with two thumb screws from behind and then the card rests on this which screws into the little holder so you can set any height on this slot basically yeah yeah you can see that other cutout better for the eps cables and these two fan cables that's also a nice cutout it also has a three-dimensional ish i want to i'm going to call it three-dimensional hole so there's same as what I was explaining with this one. 
that there's space at the top as well and not just a flat cutout. It is big enough to pass a EPS cable through in the solid 8 pin configuration. I only put one in. My board does have space for two 8 um, pin connections. I only need one. I'm not going to overclock the board specifically and even on the older board a single 8 pin EPS cable can can handle enough current not to have to worry about it. So I you wouldn't be able to pass two cables at the same time through the hole with I didn't test it but I'm sure with a little bit of finagling and wigging wiggling you'll be able to fit both cables through if you had to have connect both specifically with newer case motherboards and power supplies it's becoming less and less of a requirement standard this is a it's not a matte finish but it has a grain as you can see it's not flat black or so it is nice yeah you can see the inside of the covers so i'll explain a, the pcie covers are the bend and wiggle off so once you take them off they're out and you can never put them back in which is like i said my biggest issue we'll get to the other one a little bit later but so what you do is you lift from the back just so you can get the first pass the first little clip don't try and pull them all the way down you are going to bend something it's not the way it's meant to be done and then wiggle from the top towards the bottom so up and down and it comes off it doesn't take a lot but if you try and pull from front to back or from from the tempered glass panel side to the back of the case you're going to bend the rest of the brackets the slots so just slight you'll feel it and then wiggle the fans don't have a rating on them those standard 12 volt four pin i think they're four pin i can't remember specifically now they come off the controller here is the fan hub the so you have space for five fans here fan one's five then you have space for two additional led strips which is very nice then you have the pw pwm in from the motherboard so you cut like the that into a four pin on your motherboard to control all of these pwm signals at the well the fan pwm signals this is this comes from the switch just be careful it does fit on a standard three pin fan header i don't know what will happen either at the switch end or at the headers end if you put this cable onto a fan cap a fan connector it does have the one brown wire that you can just see here just watch i made the mistake and then i was looking for where the this cable is and then i i had it plugged in so just be aware of that then i have then you have five argb um, ports on the side for fans as well and you have a this is specifically labeled aura sync for asus motherboards but i think they actually mention that it works with gigabyte and msis as well but so this is this is just a um rgb controller from your motherboard it comes there is a cable included in the accessory bag okay issue number two this power supply filter as you can see it has eight clips two on each side it means it can't slide so working underneath it or from behind or something is a mission if you want to just clean the filter it's not the best filter it's a little piece of sheet metal with hole pu holes punched out of it for lack of a better description it is flexible but the edges aren't filed down there are some bent ones it's it's budget it's where you can it's one of the places where you can really see that it is a cheap case 
So, and yeah, you have your hard drive bay, the three and a half inch, which just screws out with two thumb screws, one here and then one on the other side of the drive bay, and you can just take out the drive bay. So it only has a single mounting point, but that's fine. I take them, I always take them out. I don't know many people that still use three and a half inch hard drive bays. Ah, that's, yeah. If they do, it's, they're using it, they're looking for a case with lots of three and a half inch hard drive bays because they're running a DIY NAS or they have lots of three and a half inch storage. These feet are actually quite high, I'd estimate. You have about a centimeter and a half to two, two and a half. So about a most of an inch of space on the bottom. So there is enough space for airflow at the bottom. Although nothing else really caters to bottom intake. There is enough height on the feet for bottom intake to be possible. The case just doesn't cater to it. So how I have it mounted the filter, I just unhook these last two. So it actually does slide in and out. As long as you catch in these first two, you can just slide it straight through. So that works significantly better. They could have excluded these. Yeah, and yeah, you can see I have taken out the part of bay. Okay, so these are all of the parts I'm going to be using to build. Um, this is my old R9 380. I've since upgraded from that. The Bledx 3 HG 650 Gold. Supla. Um Fully modular power supply. My only problem is the cables have capacitors in them. Ugh, the in cable caps. So they are bulky at the edges. Specifically on the component side. And not on the PSU side. So it can be a little bit of a... So the cables are more bulky than they absolutely have to be. Sacrifices to be made for having additional capacitance on the lines. Um, there is a Wi-Fi 6 uh, Wi-Fi card because where the PC is going to be standing there is... It's too far to, for me and too much hassle to run um, cable to it. Um, and my the motherboard, the C87 OC formula I'm putting in, does not have built-in Wi-Fi because it's the non-AX. Interesting thing about the motherboard, which we'll see now now when I have it in the case. Those of you that know, you'll know. And then an Inwin SR24 240mm AIO. Big pump block, pump head, I suppose. With very poorly designed cable routing choices, but actually worked quite well in this case, which I was surprised about because I've used this uh, before. The only new things in this build are the Wi-Fi card and the case. This is mainly spare parts that I wasn't using for my father for a light. So my father has a light gaming and 2D CAD uh, system because he's on an old laptop at this point and it's starting to use problems. It's still got a spinning disk in spinning hard, hard disk I mean the SSD isn't on this photo but it's a a data SU 650 I think just 240 just for just to get him started as time goes on we're going to swap out parts and the ra the CPU and the RAM is already installed, installed in the motherboard it's a 4790k that's been deleted that I've got Hydronaut on underneath the IHS and the RAM. Okay, yeah, here's the motherboard. And the RAM is the Trident, the G Skill Trident X's DDR3 2400, 10, 12, 12, 24, 26, something like that. I can't remember exactly. It's been a while. Um, so you can't really, you well, you can see it here. Yeah. This is a EATX motherboard. I couldn't find the exact dimensions online. Um, but this is the standard. This, these screw holes. So just after the RAM slots are the standard ATX mounting holes. So there is, it's quite EATX. It's not 
the most EATX board in the world. But it is quite EATX. It is all one of the previous owners did savage the screw holes a little bit. I don't have this 40mm fan, which would be nice. And it actually has water cooling in the VRM heatsink. Not that it needs it because this is Haswell slash Devil's Canyon. It VRM outputs 1.7 volts to the CPU and the CPU has the integrated voltage controller. Yes, I know the 4790K is slightly overkill for what's basically an office PC that might game sometimes. And it is old, but the plan is this was just to get my father started and then we'll be upgrading as and when he has money for upgrades and things like that. You can see here's two 8-pin EPS connectors. Like I said, um, a lot of full 16x slots. I don't know if they're all wired for 16, but the full 16 length and then two by ones. And then this OLED screen doesn't work, but it has power and reset buttons on the board. And 10 SATA 3 ports, two of them, I think these bottom two, go through an additional controller. And then, so we'll see now, when we're in the case, it's a problem I did consider, which is why I wanted another case with a very flat motherboard tray, and which is why I picked the 215 in the beginning. Because this is EATX enough that it covers most of the cable routing holes, the standard three down the side. The This case is actually well enough. I this You can see here's the USB 3.0 cable. And there's my two USB 3.0 headers on the motherboard. It's not going to be an issue, fortunately, because there's enough space between that cutout, left to right, and the board for that cable to fit in. This is a very, very flexible 3.0 cable, which very surprised by it. I actually enjoy that quite a bit. Normally you have very hot, those very hard connector um, cables, which are impossible, not impossible to bend, but bend really difficult, things like that. And oh, I forgot to mention the case only comes standard with the, with six standoffs installed and then the three extra come in a little baggie i must say i like the accessory packaging there's just one single use plastic baggie the rest are zip locks so you can reuse but it comes with the three down the left and then the three down the center of the board um, pre-installed it does not have the middle standoff that pushes through to help index and this motherboard IO shield is actually still separate and it was very easy to actually get it into the cutout for the IO shield. It wasn't difficult at all. Um, so you just have to put the three extra standoffs in and then screw it in. I, after this, before I put in my IO, I ran, I ran my e single EPS cable plugged it in, just had it hanging out the back while I was building because I knew with the AO in it was going to be a difficult task to have get this plugged in and then also plugged in the 24 pin. It unfortunately wouldn't fit through even if I hadn't had the board attached first it wouldn't fit through one of these cab routing holes so I just end up having it running through to the bottom into the power supply shroud at the bottom just straight down. I could have routed it better, but the because there is so much that is going to change over time, I didn't want to spend too much time on cable, cable tidying, and cable tidying is not something I do a lot of or care too much about. So yeah, we have the... Okay, and one thing you can notice here, the, the RAM has very tall heat sinks, heat spreaders. Um, in the next image, they're gone. This is a 240 AIO, so just 120 more fans. Even with the heat spreaders off, it is touching the RAM. The board does, the case does state clearance for 280s on top. I don't think personally that it is possible. 
I just don't think there's enough space. I have it in the f mounting holes closest to the glass, temp glass side panel, and I, it's touching the RAM there. I think unless you have RAM without heat, heat spreaders at all, or very low profile like the Corsair LPX. Is Corsair LPX? The standard black one. Very, very low profile RAM that you can fit a 2.8 in here, and I still wouldn't count on it. But I did get it installed. There is contact, but it's not pressure. It's not a significant amount of pressure or even a lot of pressure. You just, it does touch. Specifically the, in the fourth slot. This is a very high pump block. As those that have worked with the SR, the N1 SR coolers would know. And the cabling is an absolute mess. There are two very short cables coming from each fan. Just about in the center of the fan. Both sides. Which then connect from the cables over here. So there's a cab running around which I've got plugged in over here. Which is a 4-pin. There's actually a 4-pin head on the board here. This board doesn't have the greatest fan, la fan layouts. But it is old. It is Z87 after all and it is an overclocking focused board so it wasn't really meant to stick in a case and forget about it i mean it comes standard with conformal coating yes <laughs> so back to the so the, these cables are an absolute mess so from the pump block you have the four pin pwm and then you have two additional cables running from it one for the Oh no, one for, one for the SATA power, and then one which is the, it's an integrated fan splitter for up to three fans. But that all come off the block, so it can result in a very big cable mess. And then the, cause, and then the cables that come off the fans are very short. And the fan in the front actually goes straight through what, the cab routing hole. And the one at the back, I've got route to the cab routing hole in the back with the EPS and the back fan. So it actually worked out really well. You can't, there's not many cables in the front that I have tidy or that I can't tidy. And then, yeah, I have the GPU and the Wi-Fi card installed. I have since moved the Wi-Fi card one slot lower because I was getting 3.0 by 8 on the GPU, which probably isn't an issue at all. But, because I forgot, this board auto bifurcates the PCIe lanes if you've got a PCIe card plugged into the fourth slot on the board. Because it was made for SLI and Crossfire. So it auto bifurcates into 8, eight and 8. And then I think it does 8, 4, 4 as well. And then 8, 4, 4 and then 4 through the chipset. So it doesn't support four-way SLI, but that's not a consideration anymore, especially the 4090s don't have SLI fingers at all, and only the 3090 and the 3090T are supported SLI. So now it's not an issue. Back then, it was a little bit of an issue considering the fact that it was an overclock focus board, but besides the point. Um, and the, with the PCIe slots being bend and, bend and break for all intents and purposes, that PCIe slot, which the Wi-Fi card is currently in, is empty. And there's nothing you can do about it because you can't put the slot cover back. But it all does fit relatively well. There's enough space for the front panel header and the two VGA cables from to come through a single cutout in the PSU shroud and run straight up. Yeah, you can actually see the GPU support bracket is not the best bracket in the world. Um, I suppose I could shorten it up a bit. It does bend. It's it's okay if you don't have a very heavy card. If you have a heavy card, although if you have a longer card, it shouldn't be an issue. If you have a short heavy card, I would suggest getting a different PCIe support bracket if you can. Yeah, and I just have this running down. I suppose I could have tried to fit it up into this back cable. But honestly, I'm not too worried about the cable management. Like I said, this is a it's going to be an ongoing project. The AO cables do touch the GPU, but 
standard now, GPUs are actually one slot further down. And I have since just adjusted that, that it doesn't make contact with the backplate. Not that it's a big issue, that's just a peace of mind thing that a whole bunch of people do. And I actually have a photo of the back. This is spaghetti. Um, but yeah, yeah, you can see the fan splitter of coming from the pump and the two fans are connected here for all the AO. There's, I've got the four ARGB fans that come with the case all plugged in here. So there's a little bit of cab routing I've just, and then I've just shoved things into the PCIe slot. Yes, the PC, PSU is mounted, the standard fan down. I know there are some people who like to put fan up, and in this it would be possible because there is, it's a vented PSU, so uh, there's a, there are holes in the power supply shroud. So you could, I know some people do like to do that. This also doesn't have a lot of cable routing room. Uh, there's a lot of room as in depth from the motherboard tray, but there's not a lot of integrated cable mounting. It's this, this is a one clip. It's a little plastic clip that clips in and out. So it's not the greatest. It's not gonna, it doesn't have a lot of force for retention. So it can be an issue if you have lots more cables. But then again, also the case is one other thing about the case. The motherboard tray, it is not a thick tray. So there is, it's easy to bend, which isn't a great thing. But also, again, it is a budget orientated case, especially if you include the fans because a normal three pack of decent ARGB fans set you back an extra $20. Two and a half inch drive base or just fasten with a thumb screw down at the bottom and then you have two mounting points easy to move or around and things. There's enough space in the power supply shroud for cables to pass over the top of the power supply and go to the front cutouts. And this is just some size comparison photos to my 215 so it is a bit shorter which you can see same basic ish shape i just still don't believe that you can fit a 240 i didn't take photos of but i don't think you can fit a 280 at the top i don't think there's space right for ram clearance i just i don't see it maybe you can i don't have a 240 to test it out with so yes i don't have other DDR3 that would fit in this board. Maybe another board, maybe different. So they are, it's possible, but I wouldn't count on it. Let's put it that way. So it's a little bit shorter than the 215. It's a little bit wide. Yes, I suppose if you're looking at your PC from the side, wider or well, less wide than the 215, but it's the same front panel, more or less the, that goes towards the, from the top. Um, you can see yeah, the front, it's relatively flat, but not very in front. And then just here, yeah, you can see the, so yeah, yeah, you can see in this photo, the, there is a blank PCIe, which doesn't have a cover because of the bend and, the bend and break system. I can't remember what it's supposed to be called. That's just what I call it. Or what I refer to it as in this video. But yeah, and then there's just the two fronts. So you can see these have significantly bigger holes in the 215. Whereas this is a finer mesh opening. But yeah. Um, all in all, too long didn't watch. I think this is quite getting up there in length. Um, for what I paid for it, less than $50. I definitely recommend this case if anyone is looking for a well at less than $50 a cheap case it's got ARGB fans they're decent airflow I don't have a way to measure specifically they are they do put out decent airflow they are a little bit noisier I haven't tweaked the fan profiles and things yet it has tempered glass side panel that's on a swing it has a mesh front panel it has all of the features 
the standard builder is going it needs if you look you're not going to really put a 4090 in this case just because of the pricing there are so but it does have 344 millimeter of gpu clearance which is a lot well it's more than some other cases let's put it that way it has the flat motherboard tray which i do, do enjoy it does fit an e8x motherboard i wouldn't recommend it but it works in a in the situation because it is flat lots of cpu cl cooler clearance you can fit a big tower cooler in the ak620 will easily fit well according to these clearances i haven't tested it i don't have big tower coolers i only have the aao the nhd15 should fit in here fine as well as so if the nhd15 should fit you'll have a lot of other ones that should fit as well i mean it's it's a decent it's better than decent it's a good case with some sacrifices to get it down to the $70 standard price not sale price but the $70 standard pricing at $70 it does compete with some of the higher end cases but at $50 it's it's a winner definitely I'd recommend this to friends I'd build in it again yeah thank you all for tuning in have a great week further cheers